This is Krish Subramanian here from Rishidhar Research. Today, uh, at uh, the uh, uh, second day of KubeCon, we are doing talk Kubernetes show on the sidelines of KubeCon. Now I'm going to be talking with Brad from Drone.io. Brad, can you introduce yourself, talk about Drone.io, and then we will talk about some of the topics that is of interest to me. Yeah, sounds great. So uh, Drone is an open source, cloud native, container native uh, CI CD system. So if you're unfamiliar, you know, if you're watching and you're unfamiliar with the concepts, uh, continuous integration is the idea that you know, as your developers are all working on a singular code base and they're all making all these changes and committing code and updating branches and issuing pull requests, uh, you use a tool like Drone to automatically integrate those changes uh, in real time, run unit tests, uh, and, and essentially the goal is to find bugs or regressions, uh, performance issues as the developers are making the changes. Uh, you know, before that code gets to your customer. And then the CD piece, the continuous delivery piece, is uh, ideally, once everything is passing and, and your code has been integrated and is passing your, your test suite, you take it one step further and you release that code to your customer. Maybe a staging environment, maybe production, uh, maybe you're doing a mobile app and you're bundling that up and, and sending it to your app store. Uh, but the idea is from, you know, commit to customer as fast as possible. Great. Uh, so, it's my personal philosophy that uh, with the advent of Docker as a container encapsulation uh, in 2012-2013 and later on Kubernetes coming in, mm -hmm. uh, my thinking is that it has completely changed the pipeline that connects, goes from developer laptop to production. Yeah. So, Docker has been eating to the right, uh, eating, eating into things to the right. It has sort of made uh, Jenkins irrelevant to some extent, especially if you are going, to, going all in. Uh, with containers, mm -hmm. and then uh, Kubernetes is coming to the left and trying to eat into some of the pieces there. Yep. So it has altered the landscape there. So can you t uh, talk about uh, how you see the landscape there in the container world, in the Kubernetes world? Sure. And uh, we will go from there. Sure. So you know you talked about back in back in 2013, and and actually that's when when Drone started, and it was, and I think really the reason that Docker was a game changer is I think it empowered developers. Uh, you know, back at that time, when you wanted to deploy code or set up a build environment, or a, not even not even a build environment, but you just wanted to run your code in production, uh, typically as a developer at a company, you you really had no control over your runtime. So typically, you were interacting with an operations team, you were opening tickets, and as the developer, you you really weren't trusted to know your own runtime. And I think containers uh, really changed that because as a developer, I was now in charge of knowing, you know, what's what's my runtime. What's in that Docker file? What's in that image? And, and it really allowed me not to just control my own environment end to end, uh, but then reproduce that locally if I, was, mm -hmm. if I was running my code on you know, a Mac for my development machine or Windows, et cetera, uh, so that you know, I, could, I could mirror exactly what I was doing in production. So I, I think that's when it, it, it first started to change. Uh, and then we started to adopt it with Drone, okay. that, that concept. So how does Drone fits into this uh, container native world? Yeah. And uh, how is it different from, let's say, there are a few others focused just mm -hmm. on container native yeah. pi pipeline, like uh, Thomas, for example. Can you lay the landscape and talk about how Drone fits in? Sure. So you know, we talked about how the idea of empowering the developer to ha manage their own runtime through containers. And so what Drone did very early on was it was to it applied that same concept to, to continuous integration and continuous delivery, and you know specifically if if you know maybe if, if you can rewind back to like 2005 and, and maybe you were at a big company and you you were using Jenkins, you're using Java let's say, and now you need to upgrade your Java version. Well, how do you do that? You open a ticket, you find the Jenkins admin, someone with access to the box, mm -hmm. they have to upgrade Jenkins or upgrade upgrade Java. But they can't upgrade Java because maybe other teams are using that same machine and they're not ready for the new version. And so you see these conflicts that, that arise. And that, you know, the, the beauty of containers, and I think they, you know, containers uh, are a great use case for, for CI CD because number one, you have isolation. So different teams can be using different technologies without stepping on each other's toes. Uh, and at the same time, again, a developer gets to define their own build environment. They bring their own build environment. So gone are the days where you have to ask someone to you know, upgrade or install something on the server. As a developer, uh, you say, OK, I need a CI environment with uh, a Java image, a Node image, a Mongo image. 
and then Drone helps orchestrate all of that, download everything automatically, and, and so it really empowers the developer and, and lets them kind of simplify their workflow. Okay. Can, can you sort of lay out the landscape and talk how Drone is different from, say, uh, I can, I'm just yes. seeking two out of random, yeah. Atomist or Superbull, uh, or any, any other uh, player in the space. Sure. And uh, talk about the uh, unique advantages Drone has yeah. from your perspective. So, I mean, I think there's a number of advantages. First of all, the Drone is open source. Uh, so you can find it on GitHub. It, it's, it's got a really large community uh, that's behind it. So I think that's, you know, the fact that you can just open up and, and look at the source code is, is incredibly important to a lot of developers. But one thing that I think sets Drone apart is from day one it was built uh, not to be a SaaS product. You know, everyone was doing SaaS. And when I built Drone, uh, it was based on the assumption that uh, the, you know, people want to run this stuff on their own servers. Uh, they don't want to give their code, which is, uh, you know, some of their most valuable IP. They don't want to put that on someone else's servers. They don't want their passwords and, you know, their production credentials for, for continuous delivery sitting on someone else's server. So Drone was built from the ground up to be installed on your own servers and, you know, hopefully very easy to install. Um, the other, I think, differentiator uh, is that now Drone runs natively on Kubernetes itself. So instead, you know, you can run Drone on Docker. So, you know, Drone will act as an orchestration engine and it'll uh, spawn Docker containers and orchestrate your build and your pipeline process. But uh, we recently announced the ability to, Drone can take your pipeline and translate that into native pods and services and secrets. And so it really nicely integrates with the whole Kubernetes engine. Can, can you sort of talk a little more deeply about uh, how it works in, the, in terms of like, um, uh, talk about the integration points? Does it uh, use Kubernetes secrets uh, yeah. store to sort of show the secret? And uh, how does it transform the whole landscape? Yeah, absolutely. For, for an end user, how does it transform? Uh, trans well, yeah, okay, great question. So, I mean, so let's start with, um, you know, kind of the, how, how it works, but I think the best way to describe it is if we look at how, how did CI traditionally work? Like if you were used to maybe Jenkins or a more traditional tool, typically you set up a, a Jenkins server and then you would install agents on a bunch of different machines. And this is how you would set up a distributed uh, build infrastructure. So uh, with, with Drone and Kubernetes, uh, those agents are gone. Now you just take the server and you just point it right at Kubernetes and now all of a sudden you have a massively scalable build infrastructure uh, and you really don't have to do anything special to achieve that. Uh, we can kind of piggyback on all the amazing work the Kubernetes community is doing and offload all those complex orchestration tasks uh, to them. So you know, how does that benefit an end user? I would say actually from an end user perspective, you don't see a ton of difference. Uh, the way you configure your, your pipeline is, and run it is the same. I think uh, from an operator or a sysadmin perspective, it becomes much easier to run. Uh, and scale. Uh, so from an end user perspective, I guess I would say the easier it is to scale internally, maybe the less, uh, the less you have to worry about, you know, maybe your build sitting in a queue waiting for an available server, you know, now we can take all advantage of these auto scaling features. Mm -hmm. right. So can, can you talk about some of your customers and uh, how they are using it and uh, probably like uh, even uh, add some context like uh, the, this is how they were doing uh, CI CD in the past and mm -hmm. drone, these are the advantages they gain. So that will help people understand the value of it. By sure. Better. So, you know, I would say virtually everyone that, that is using drone now was at some point using uh, a big centrally managed uh, Jenkins installation within their enterprise organization. And so, you know, like I mentioned before, it was really this idea of, of not feeling empowered to make changes not being able to install plugins or not being able to upgrade environments. And so I think that was the selling point to get them to uh, integrate drone within their organization. They wanted something where the developers were in control of their environments, where they didn't have to ask someone else to get stuff done, where they didn't have to pause in their development workflow and, and open tickets or, or talk to sysadmins. And, and so that was kind of the motivation for a lot of these organizations. Um, you know, some, so drone has a lot of enterprise customers. Uh, uh, who can be very confident that I keep, uh, I take you know, the confidentiality of the agreements we sign very seriously, but I can, I can talk about some of our customers publicly. So, uh, you know, for example, eBay uses uh, Drone heavily for a number of its flagship products. Mm -hmm. uh, so they use it um, in, in conjunction with GitHub Enterprise to build, test, and automatically deploy uh, some of their largest services uh, to Kubernetes. I think they're doing something like uh, 
I'm going to misquote it, but I want to say 10,000 deployments a month uh, using drone. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So on the other side, like, uh, are you integrated with the, all the deployment platforms? So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So one of the coolest things about drone is, uh, is how we do third party integrations. So if you're familiar with, again, a tool like Jenkins um, and you wanted to integrate with a third party, you would build a plugin. And so uh, traditionally a plugin maybe was like a jar file or you, know, you wrote some Java code and you would bundle that and upload it to Jenkins. Again, you'd have to ask a system administrator to do something like that. And I think one of the things that Drone did very early on uh, that was, I think, pretty innovative uh, is that the Drone plugin is just a Docker container in your pipeline. Okay. So you can bundle these. You know, you imagine you take this, this complex task, like I want to do uh, a, a blue-green deployment to a Kubernetes cluster. And that's going to be a lot of code and scripting. Uh, but once you've done that, you can bundle that up into a, a plugin, which is just a Docker container. Mm -hmm. You can publish it to a Docker registry mm -hmm. and then share that with the community. And then when a team's defining their pipeline, uh, they can just define and say, hey, use this Docker image as part of my pipeline step and run this predefined uh, task. That, that's kind of my long-winded way of saying drone integrates with um, pretty much any deployment target you could think of. We have hundreds of, of plugins that our community members have created. So whether or not uh, that's you know, doing Kubernetes deployments or Kubernetes deployments via Helm or building and publishing Docker images. I mean, if, if, if there is a deployment workflow, someone has likely built a, a plugin for it in our community. Awesome. Before we end up, I want to ask you a question. Like, yeah. uh, we'll try to answer it within uh, 280 characters for the yes, uh, okay. uh, thing. So if I am a Jenkins user or if I am using any of the other CI/CD system like Travis mm -hmm. or anything, well, what is one single reason I should consider drone? Like I'm just trying to make people understand the value. From sure. I would say plugins. I can do that one, right? That's like what, 10, 10 words yeah. in, a, in a nice little, or 10 characters so in, in plugins, a nice suite. Plugins. Okay, yes. The extensibility of the platform yeah. is what is. Uh, yes, different. extensibility, plugins, extensions. Okay. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Great. Uh, where can, where can uh, they find uh, information about your platform sure. uh, and your coordinates on social media? Sure. So you can follow us at Drone.io and uh, definitely come check out our project on, on GitHub. All the, the code is open source, github.com slash drone slash drone. Awesome. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, All right. uh, thanks for your time. Thank you for having me. Chat.